just an introduction to to uh, session seven. Can you guys all see this? Excellent. And I want you to start writing your goals while Pops Matthew is going to take the bulk of this as per normal and share on leisure. But leisure includes hobbies, interests, holidays, rest periods, and relaxation. And as I keep saying last week, and I said it this week at the start, and for those who weren't here, um, I came from a, a, a perspective and learning that leisure was not important, that you could you have all the time in heaven and you should be working, working, working hard for God on earth. And so leisure for me was a very hard thing to come around with the all the, the other areas of, of, of the eight in the wheel of life were easier um, until I began to recognize um, that leisure is just as important and it's just an, as important for us to have rest times where God can speak to us. Um, in the chat group, I put up a scripture that says in Solomon 2.10, my beloved calls to me, arise my darling, come away with me, my beautiful one, Sol in Solomon 2.10. It's such a beautiful scripture and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll paste it again because some of those who came in later might have not seen it on the chat group. And then Jesus again in Mark 6.31 to 33, what does he say to his disciples? Um, come away with me. You know, similar language. Who, who is the lover of our soul? You know, it's Jesus. What a blessing for that. So the lesson outcomes of today, what would I like to achieve in my leisure time, including my hobbies, interests, holidays, rest periods, and relaxation time over the next 12 months? I want you to get out your goals. And if you've got your goal sheet, um, you can use a template we've sent you, or you can just get a plain sheet of paper and write down what are three things I want to achieve in terms of leisure that's is it a hobby is it an interest i wanted to start or do more of is it the holiday um is it just taking some rest finally i haven't heard anyone say this but maybe sometimes you might need to just say i'm going to take a day off a week and do nothing and i think rubika shaking hand going that would be nice right <laughs> just do nothing like you should do what i do i wake up when i finish sleeping how good is that like if I have to set my alarm, I get a little bit cranky. Now, I still wake up, you know, fa sometimes fairly early, sometimes later, but I just wake up when I finish sleeping. I go to bed when I'm ready to, when I'm tired, when I've done all my work, because I realize that no one's going to dictate to me how, when to start uh, to get up and go to sleep. Uh, all my responsibilities dictate that to me, don't get me wrong, but no one else has to in terms of example, work and life and what we've been groomed to have. So I just want you to think, think, write down three things while we're, while we're doing, going through this. Uh, and then how can I create meaningful steps to achieve this and being accountable and measurable to this? And so you don't have to wait for us to do the breakout rooms. Uh, what I want you to start doing is trying to think through this, even as Pops Matthew shares tonight, um, the three things you'd like to achieve over the next 12 months. To, you know, Just because you write it down doesn't mean you have to do it but it'll help you, it'll be on your mind. It might be just, I wanna wake up and, and smell the coffee. I don't know why some people like to smell coffee in the morning. I hear people saying, do not talk to me, I'm so grumpy till I have my first cup of coffee. I wanna cast the demon out of it. I mean, sorry, anyway, <laughs> I, I don't understand it, but it, obviously for some people that's important. And it might be, I just wanna get up and have a nice cup of tea or coffee. I wanna hear the birds chirping, why not? Why not? What's stopping you from doing that? Right? So quite opposite from, from what we did last week, which is career. Um, and it's really, but it's just as important. And I want you to look at breaking that down into three, the three areas into three, six, nine, and 12 month smart goals. And I'm just going to give you an example of that in my life. So keeping in mind that leisure was a hard thing for me for many years. These are my three because I want you to think about how you can start doing it yourself. So go four wheel driving and camping with the children and also as a social outreach. Um, go shopping with Gertrude at least every fortnight. Gertrude loves shopping with me. She doesn't like shopping without me and I love shopping with her. So that works out well. Most uh, wives and husbands don't get in agreement on those things. So, so that worked, worked really well. Normally the wife, I think, asks for the credit card and the husband. All right, I won't become a Pops Matthew and put my foot in it about how many shoes the wife buys. <laughs> I'll, let him, I'll let him do that. He does a good job. Um, and then I said, travel to and pray for each state and territory in Australia by January 2022. Keeping in mind that I wrote this in January. 
Okay, and this is exciting for me because we, you know, it looks like Australia is shut down still. We can't do international travel. And, you know, Pops Matthew, myself, Papa Luke, we're, we're used to just traveling so much. Um, but I said, well, it's a good time to go around Australia. That's why my four wheel drive is important. And so these are my um, three, six, nine, 12 month goals for my four wheel drive. Um, go four wheel driving at least one to two times by uh, times by April and change my tires to uh, all terrains. And today I got to change my tires, so I'm all excited about it. Um, took my my sons with me and my nephew, and we watched as it was done, and we done some research over th the last few months. And look, this all might sound not interesting to you, but it was exciting for me. And I've done my first, uh, done a couple of four wheel drives uh, between January and April, done about three or four, and it's exciting. So I've ticked that, right? And it was just satisfying to be able to say I've done that, right? Um, and I've got six, nine and 12 month goals. Now, they aren't smart. So smart means they've got to be specific. So go four wheel driving is specific. Um, it's got to be measurable. So if I go at least once to twice a, uh, in between January to April, I can measure it. Is it attainable? Yes, I didn't say go four wheel driving every week because I know that's not attainable. Um, is it relevant to the, the big goal here? Yes, it is. It's part of going four wheel driving, camping and camping with the children. And do I need to have my t tires changed? Yes. And so have I done it? That's that's a that's that's measurable. Um, and is it time bound? Yes, it's by April. So I want you to think about writing some goals that you can break up into three, six, nine, twelve. And these are some of the others just to give you some examples to help you with. So even with traveling, I, I, I'm, I'm giving myself the three months to organize a plan. And then I'm looking at traveling to two states within six months. And I've given an example of what I think, but I might change that. And then three other states in, in Australia, and then, the, and then the two territories. Make sense? Okay. So I just want you to think about that as Pops Matthew shares, just to give you an idea of how um, you can create your smart goals. So we're going to pass it over to Pops Matthew, and he's going to share a bit more on leisure. Uh, keep in mind the scripture. I've put two scriptures up on the screen um, on leisure that you can use, or you can use some. I like the Ecclesiastics one that uh, um, that Davy had. Davy, could you grab that and just quickly read that as I pass it over to Pops Matthew? Um, so I concluded there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. It's awesome. I, I think it's great that we connect leisure with pleasure, you know, and, and uh, that's a really great thing. So uh, thank you, David. That's a really good scripture as well. If you could p copy and paste it onto our chat group, that'll be great. And if anyone else has got some scriptures around leisure, please feel free to copy paste them onto our chat group. So by the end of it, we have a, a few scriptures that you guys can take from. You don't have to look for your own. Um, Pops Matthew, over to you. Thank you. Okay, let me share my screen. All right, here we go. Well, leisure is a very interesting topic. I think, uh, let's pray first. Father, we thank you one for this evening, for this time where we are uh, discussing the topic of leisure as part of our wheel of life that uh, you have created into leisure for us as mankind to enjoy. Uh, and uh, because you have made it possible for us, Lord. So you have shown an example. Jesus has given us examples of leisure, rest, so today, whatever we say, whatever we teach, we pray that we'll honor you and be speaking the truth from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look, yesterday I was, uh, you know, my birthday, my son and my son-in-law and my daughter, we were planned, they took me to Hillsville for lunch. Uh, on the way, they say, why don't we stop over in this beautiful garden? Because my son, my son-in-law, he loves, he's a part-time florist as well. So he loves all these plants and flowers. So we drove by, the weather was beautiful, you know, it was not raining, but it was just cool and lovely. But what surprised me was that the number of birds that we saw there, 
because the garden was so conducive for the for for birds to be attracted. Uh, and these, the, you know, I've never seen some of these birds. Some of these were tiny birds with beautiful colors, buzzing along, you know, chirping away. It's just amazing. It was so beautiful. Uh, and, you know, that's part of leisure because when we actually in a place of rest and when we see what God creation is around us, right, it's just over, oh, it relaxes us, it gives us joy. You know, the spirit rises up and just it praises God because of his creation. Right, so leisure doesn't have to be something that is costs you money. Leisure can be utterly uh, free of cost. Right, so we're going to talk about some of these things that uh, that we, we you know we, today. Uh, what is leisure? Why it is needs, uh, it's important to God, and what are the do's and don'ts? So that's what we're going to cover here today. So again, uh, just to wrap, uh, give you up to date. This is week eight. Uh, we, week one, we covered spirituality, then we covered life partner, then we did the uh, family, then we did a recap on those three, and then we went on to friends, money, career, and today we're going to talk about leisure, and next week we're going to talk about health. So we got one more week on health, and then we will do a wrap up, one week of wrapping up, so that if there's any questions anybody's got to ask, we can just uh, handle it uh, so that it becomes a 10 week discipleship training so again uh, Ruben has already covered this you know what would you like to uh, achieve in your leisure time including with hobbies interests and so on I won't repeat it uh, so it's just for you know you all are familiar with now setting up the three goals uh, and then breaking it down to six three six nine twelve smart goals and also what is the scripture verse that you want to memorize plus who is your uh, accountability partner that you want to sort of uh, arrange so that you can be make sure that whatever you're doing uh, is sort of uh, uh, you can actually accomplish and you you can uh, you know you can make it become somebody accountable for your, your performance so let's consider uh, what is leisure right you know we i've just cut out some, a little bit on the uh, leisure from the wheel of cycle so he talks about relax time and so on uh, but what I would say is that leisure can generally be considered anything that is outside of work, right? Anything that you're, you know, when you come home, you're spending time with the children, your spouse, uh, it's all, is considered leisure. So it's a time where you're relaxing, you're actually having that family bonding and so on. Uh, so this is, so, so leisure can be anything that's outside of work because work is something that we need to do to put food on the table. So leisure is where, from the income that we derive or from the time that's available to us, how can we get, you know, enjoy uh, something that we want to do rather than what we must do? So that's a big difference. So leisure is, is a freedom to pursue person, personally pleasing activities that are not only worthwhile, but provide a basis for strengthening faith. So it must be something, whatever we do, we must try and See how that can also, you know, line up with what God's word is. How how we can bless God, how we can appreciate what God has given us in this in this life, so that we are grateful to Him uh, for for what we for the leisure that we are do, the activities we're doing. Leisure is doing what, as I said here, what you what you want, what what you leisure is doing what you want, not what versus what you sorry that should be want uh, versus what you must do. Okay, so that's a typo error there. Uh, so the, in, the, in a lot of leisure activities, only, you know, sometimes only the person doing themselves them understands the rewards involved in that activity. For example, Ruben talks about, you know, going for four wheel driving, that's his passion, you know, probably sitting there behind the wheels and, you know, jumping up and down, you know, going through the bumps and the muds and all that. Whereas the passenger sitting there might be wondering, why am I here? <laughs> all right. So, so it is so exactly like running a marathon. I, I don't envy the guy who's running marathon, 36 miles, kilometers they're running. And, you know, I'm just sitting, I'm just, you know, I'm, it's painful for me to watch them sometimes, especially those who are struggling. You know, the, those who are doing well is fine. We understand those who are still in pain and agony, and yet they still want to run through with it. But only they understand the pleasure of it, right? So we are not there to criticize anybody or whatever pleasure they have. That is something special to them. They enjoy it. Even so, there might be sometimes that it might be a painful exercise. All right. So same thing, leisure activities are pleasant. It brings happiness. 
provides a sense of freedom and playfulness, right? It's, it's a time where we can be, we have a freedom, we can let our hair down. I should have put my picture today of my, uh, what was, you know, the one I just on Saturday, I put it up, I should have, next one, next one, I put it there. Uh, so it's my, all my hair is coming up, you know, down. And, so yeah, so it's a time of uh, letting your hair down, just relax. You don't get to guard yourself against uh, things like in a workplace, you know, you've got to be careful what you're doing, you don't offend people and so on. But it gives you so much of freedom, right? And, and playfulness when you, especially you're playing with the children or you're playing, you know, you're playing games with friends, uh, you know, it, it is fun. And you can joke, you can laugh, and there is no offense against anybody else. So, so it is a moment of real joy. We are really relaxing and actually gives your body a lot of energy and vitality as part of that measure. Right. So recreation, entertainment, I mean, recreation, stroke, entertainment, uh, sports and games all fall under the big umbrella of leisure. So when I say recreation, entertainment, you're going for movies or theaters and so on. Uh, it's an audience sport activity. Sport is something that you can be individual as a team. And games is something that you don't, it's not very necessarily physical, but it is something that's more mentally could be challenging, it could be absorbing. So, so these are different kinds of uh, activities that we do as part of leisure, right? Recreation is a leisure activity with expected benefits that are positive to the individual. So actually leisure is positive to human being because it gives us creativity, it gives us time to uh, listen to others without having, con you know, condemning with, and so on. And, uh, and, you know, so as I said, I went for a walk, you know, we were in the garden and I just, just watching the birds singing, you know, those, it was, it was such a positive thing for me. You know, it was just admiring and appreciating how God has created so many different birds, uh, you know, and different animals and so on. It's just amazing, right? So when you, and you begin to open your eyes and when you watch these things, you know, your, your heart and your spirit, your spirit mentor rejoices because it is something that is what God wants you to enjoy it's a pleasure that God has created for us, right? So they can be have external, you know, some of them have external benefits like physical. If you go to gym, you may want to keep your, you know, gym is a leisure. You go, you want to keep your body fit and so on. Uh, benefits as well, such as aerobics and or hiking. And, and so will, you know, less opportunity. But some people don't have the luxury. For example, farmers, you know, they're a bit more uh, handicapped in these areas. Uh, and when I was younger, I, I loved aerobics. I was, you know, I enjoy almost every three, four, four days a week, I'll do aerobics, right? And it made it even more exciting when it's a mixed group, when you know, men and women are doing it together, it's even more fun, right? So it was, it, but it gave me physically so healthy and the energy level was amazing, right? So this is what it is. So, so you know, it, leisure can mean different things to different people, but end of the day, it's all about giving us that, that freedom to enjoy that moment, uh, with, which we enjoy and gives us the leisure and the pleasure to, to have something that we enjoy rather than going, treating it as a work, work. Okay. So some activities listed in the Bible, uh, the Sabbath is a day that people have freedom to work from work, Exodus 2.20. But what Jesus said in Mark 7.27 is more appropriate. It was made for man. Uh, Sabbath was made for man to rest. It's interesting to know that even though God worked for six days, Right, he rested on the seventh day, but since then he hasn't done any any new work. He's still resting, right? But obviously he has activities planned, but that, that doesn't it's not work. It's actually been planned. The activities are already planned ahead, so he just activates them as and when he needs to, right? And that's the beauty. So so that's fun, you know. So God is having fun in heaven with the with the with the word Jesus Christ and all the people hanging around there in heaven. Okay, so I'm sure I love to go and have a, get a glimpse of what's happening there, right? So music and dance or, or the arts are listed in Psalms that are, you know, David enjoyed, he loved music, uh, he danced and he played music and he composed, you know, Psalms and songs. Uh, and of course, music is part of festivals. They had the tabernacles, the feasts, everything, you know, it, there was a lot of dance and music associated around it where people take time off and they're enjoying the moment uh, as part of the festival, right? Celebration of holidays, yeah, of course, as I said, it's just repeating on holidays. It's a form of, uh, you know, relaxation. Of course, we, you know, people like 
we celebrate uh, the Lord's, uh, you know, for example, Easter, we take time off to take time off to, you know, to, uh, appreciate what he has done for us. The more, but at the same time, it's a time for us to celebrate is that's part of our leisure, right? To enjoy the, that, that, that celebration as well. During the Feast of the Tabernacles, you know, men, Jews, you know, thought about the Exodus. They you know, erected tents to get away from the business of everyday of life, to think about how good God has been and to them in the past. So this is, as I said, uh, this is how I understand camping started. So camping started from this example. So I can go away. <laughs> right? So so camping started from, uh, you know, from the Feast of the Tabernacles where people erected uh, uh, tends to get away from <laughs> from the home. <laughs> That's my theory, anyway. So, <laughs> right, makes sense, right? And uh, hospitality or leisure is found in the Old Testament, where they took people to, into their homes, provided them with food, drinks, to their dwelling. So again, it's like we've seen even in the New Testament, where they go house to house, breaking bread, praying, fellowshipping, enjoying uh, the time together. So you know there is a moment of uh, holiness at the same time, that's moment of that pleasure, time off, relaxing, enjoying the goodness of God uh, in the form of a leisure uh, and celebration, right? And the Song of Solomon's, uh, I know this, you know, this is something people can interpret, but uh, sex is mentioned as a leisurely act, leisure activity within the tradition of marriage, marriage, marital context, right? So, you know, sex between a, hus a husband and wife is a pleasure, is a, a, a leisurely. It's a pleasure, it's a leisurely activity. So it's something that God created for us to enjoy. So there's nothing awkward about it. There's nothing ashamed, about, but that's how God created us, right? That that moment of intimacy, that, you know, the time together, it's, it's just an amazing experience, right? You're, super, you're, you know, you're sort of lost in your own world, right? So in the New Testament celebration, <clears throat> it, it takes place like in John 2, the wedding, where Jesus, you know, found mother asked him to, you know, turn water to wine. And they find that the wine is a better wine than the first wine that was served. And they're all celebrating, enjoying it. And in Mark uh, 11, 28, where Jesus talks about rest, getting away uh, from, you know, work from the time so that they can have rest because of very, there's so many people they're attending to all the time, people are following. And of course, the, you know, the quality of abundance of life that God, Jesus wants us, John 10, 10, right? So, you know, look, there are many, many, many scripture verses. These are some examples of where leisure is, you know, we can interpret so many things that God taught as a, as a form of leisure, as a form of enjoyment, as a form of uh, thing that we do with, with honoring God. At the same time, we have that time for ourselves to be able to have that freedom to relax and enjoy what God has created to given us on this earth. All right. Even in 1 Corinthians 9, sports is used as a bridge between recreation and evangelism. Paul talks about it. So, <clears throat> so I'll talk about some of these in, in more detail. Right? So, leisure. While we must admit that a lot of time can be wasted, right, and that the devil will use leisure activities to get people to sin, but that does not mean that the leisure itself is wrong. The leisure itself is not wrong. It is how you use it and what you use it for and what is your intention and motives behind it. That's what makes the difference between sin and being something uh, that you have clean fun that is honest God and you know yourself. Okay, so that's so there's nothing wrong with leisure, but it's about how you use it. This is critical, right? So we must have a balanced life. Rest is essential. You know, God has given that as essential because we are made of flesh. The spirit doesn't need rest. The spirit can go on and on and on forever. That's why in heaven, I understand they, you know, even they, they don't sleep. It's 24 hours by seven. There's no time. time. They're always awake. Uh, even apparently the how mentions that each of us have got a, got a beautiful recreation part of the home, but there's no bedroom in the mansions because they don't need to sleep. Why do you need a bedroom when you don't need to sleep, right? Because it's your spirit and your soul that is up there, not your flesh. On earth, we need the because the flesh is the one that gets tired. So that's why the body it needs a rest. So <clears throat> to rest, restore our physical body, proper leisure. Even Jesus, as I said, instructed the disciple to come aside to a deserted place to rest because they needed that time. Otherwise, they're just overworked and they're not being able to produce. Uh, you know, be, they'll be grumpy and they will not be able to do what God wants them to do. 
it must be in line with biblical teaching. So whatever we do leisure, <clears throat> always check against the word of God. <clears throat> is it something that honors God? Is it something that, you know, uh, maybe it's a good thing? Or is it something that the evil devil is prompting me to do something that is goes against the word of God? For example, gambling, right? Gambling is definitely not something that you want to, to look into it. <clears throat> or even pornography. If you're looking at pornography, watching pornography is a leisure. That is not God's plan. So that is, you know, it stumbles you and it gives you, you know, commits, makes you to sin. Some examples of activities to avoid, as I said, is gambling, uh, movies, plays, TV shows, video games, music that are full of violence, right? Sexual in nature, coarse, and coarse languages. I think I spelled the wrong coarse. The language word is wrong. Coarse, I'm old. Now I see it when I prepare it. I didn't miss see it. You know, it's crazy, all right? Coarse language and so on. So you see, so, so the thing is, the Bible is very, very clear. The, there is a checklist of do's and don'ts. And this is what we need to always check ourselves against. Okay, it's about even in stewards, in sports, in leisure, we need to be good stewards. Right? If you're not a good steward, then you're going to do the wrong things and you're going to make mistakes and then you're going to regret later. So most leisure can be grouped into sports, right? Games, entertainment. So I'm going to go into a little bit of each of those areas. I think that's most of them sort of falls into that group. And how we determine what we're doing is biblical and acceptable. So we're going to question ourselves in each of these areas, what we're doing, is it biblical? It is something that brings glory to God. And also, it also blesses us, our soul, our soul and our spirit. It's very important. So let's look at sports. <clears throat> Is my sports an opportunity for Christian outreach? Like what uh, Ruben was asking uh, uh, Jane and uh, I think someone else uh, to give a testimony about, uh, I think it's Rubika, right? So we can use sports as an opportunity to, to for evangelism. Uh, for example, so you can take children out, you know, or to parks, uh, have games with them, run sports. And in the meantime, you can talk to them about uh, life, life, life experiences, quality. Uh, you know, teach them some some biblical truth into their lives. Uh, even, I know there are some organization ministries who actually use sports as a ministry, right? So they do. Uh, they take uh, groups of people out, uh, have you know, for games, and and they as part of that they do evangelism as well. So that is something that you can do. Is that something that you you know in, in your sports? You can say, am I using it for positive values, building relationship, <coughs> teamwork, or am I doing it for self-satisfaction? Right? Because if you're, let's say if you're playing a, a football, footy, or soccer, you know, it's a team game. You can't be, be think that you are the hero there. You want to control the ball and control, control the game and try to win, you know, score goals. That doesn't go. That's not what, you know, that doesn't all go well. Then you're actually creating friction in the team, you know, there's no teamwork, there's no friendship in there, uh, there's no sharing of the victory or the, you know, the wins among all your teammates. So, so we've got to be very, very careful in what we do, you know, so we need to be uh, like, like Christ in all those things uh, and build relationships because when, when we build relationships in the teamwork, people will trust you more, people will come to you, want you to be more and more involved. They'll invite you to be involved in activities because they know you are a person who is a, is a team player, who doesn't take glory for yourself. You're prepared to uh, bless others and enjoy the game uh, well. So that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, what does it cost in terms of time and finance? Uh, is it, you know, again, you've got to be very careful. Am I getting into debt because of this, of the sports I'm doing? You know, I, am I stewarding my, my my finances well. For example, you may say you may want to go and buy, you know, you, you love water sports. You may go and buy that water scooter, right? Water jet ski. But if you're only using it once or twice a year, you're going to spend thirty thousand dollars. That is not a good good thing to do. That is not wise. You rather myself rent it when you go for those holidays and use it rather than buying it because one, that is not good stewardship because it's a depreciating asset, it is going to cost you money. And if you're only using it once or twice, then it is a very high maintenance cost. So you got to be careful. Uh, so again, you know, are you getting into expensive 
membership. For example, I know some people pay thousands of dollars uh, for golf membership, right? When there are so many uh, park open for free golf courses that you can go and play, right? So it's about, again, I'm not saying it is right or wrong, but it's about how am I stewarding what God has given me uh, in, in the area of my leisure? Am I spending too much money? I, you know, it does my, is, am, I, am I being fair to my family? All these things come into play. So we need to be very, very careful about what we do. Okay. How does it compare with others in other areas of life? Are you putting more priority into your sports compared to spending time? You know, if I know that, and I'm coming to that a little bit later, that I, there is a common word called golf widows, soccer widows, right? where the men are so engrossed with the games and what they want to do that they neglect the time they need to give to their spouses. And in the end, what happens? There is friction there, right? So you've got to be very, very careful. How does it compare with other areas? So you must make sure you prioritize. What about my children? You know, if I just, well, I'm being selfish, come Saturday, Sunday, I disappear from home. I'm just playing golf Saturdays and Sundays, you know, with my friends and my mates. I leave my wife alone, my children, I'm not bonding with them. Those are not the sort of things that we need to do. So it's just give an example. So, so we've got to be very, very careful about how we steward the time we have uh, with that in, in leisure. So don't, don't get carried away. Don't go into extremes uh, in area of sports or any, any leisure for that matter, right? Does it interfere with other things of higher priority? Am I uh, neglecting my time with the Lord? You know, am I... Uh, at the expense of, you know, uh, and for my games or sport that I do, right? Especially if you look in Australia now, in you know, most of the Western nations, right? They play, you know, people play football, soccer, foot, footy on Sundays. It's a normal thing, right? So, but, you know, are you, where is your priority? Are you spending time, quality time with the wife and the children? Are you, are you prepared to, you know, just... Uh, again, as I say, go with your mates into those kind of places and, and ignore other high priority areas in life. And this is why we talk about the wheel of life, the eight areas. How am I, how am I balancing each of those areas? And leisure is one of the areas. Okay. Am I neglecting my spouse, children at the expense of my leisure? I've already covered that. So be very, very careful, right? These are some very important things in life, right? And is the activity in family-friendly atmosphere? So, for example, the sports, if you're doing, is it in a family-friendly atmosphere or is it in a place where there are a lot of filth, a lot of abusive words are being used, a lot of alcohol is being consumed? So you've got to be very, again, as believers of Christ, right? We need to be go. We need to go into a, a, a safe environment because if you're bringing your children along, for example, into sports, and if they hear all these abusive words and no, you know, uh, it, they might think this is norm, right? And they they get desensitized to all these things, and then as they grow up, they think it's normal. So again, so we are to be responsible for those things, right? So let's look at games. Games, same thing, similar to sports, but requires less physical ability because games is something more indoors rather than actually outdoors. Uh, requires some mental ability. That means you're playing card games or video games, board games, crossword. You, you need to use your, you know, intellectual. You got to be, uh, you got to be ment mentally uh, alert in these games uh, because that requires uh, some form of uh, understanding how the game is played, and the rules, understand the rules, and how to win the games and so on. So this is again uh, something that is, you know, is good. Uh, it, it, this is more can be more family friendly, right? Or and, and it's less uh, expensive in in the areas in you know un, unlike sports, right? It can be played at home or in friends. Again, you must be careful. Am I using for gambling or betting? If I go to play, you know, any one of these, whether you're playing card games or video games, board games, you don't don't bet that you are going to be there. You know, don't put money use money to because then you are actually being sucked into the way the enemy wants you to be and then suddenly you might probably end up losing big money right and then you get into debts so it's very easy to be you know might start with something small then it gets heavier bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly you're going to be in, uh, playing a lot you know we know people who like you know we have heard of this guy uh, 
people going into these uh, hotels where they have these gaming machines, uh, you know, clubs. That, you know, it's innocent. Some people go for meals. Some people go there every day. They're gambling on the on those one arm bandits. You know, this uh, wasting money. It's a game. It's not a sport, right? But because this, it's become an addict. They're addicted to it. So you cannot, don't be addicted to those things. So you need to know where to draw the line, right? Again, am I using my time wisely? Because some of these things, especially card games, if you play poker or something, sometimes we know it goes all through night. People play. So again, you've got to be mindful of it. You know, if you play all night and then next day you're going to go to work, you're going to be exhausted. If you're going to work or play all night and you come home, you're going to be sleeping, you feel sleepy, you want to sleep, and but they, then your children and your spouse might be waiting, have other plans for you, and you're not going to be participating in the plans, you're going to disappoint them. So we've got to be very, very careful. Time, we guard our time in every one of these things. And also the same, some of the questions I pose under sports is also relevant here. Okay. Again, like video games, you can't, you don't want to constantly be buying expensive video games and play. Uh, because if they are, you know, the video games are quite very, can be very, very expensive. You, uh, so you've got to be very careful about it as well, right? And now it comes to entertainment. Generally, it will, you'll be the audience in entertainment like movies, TV, th you know, watching TV, theater shows, uh, theater shows. I like Ruben, you're being fed, <laughs> right? Uh, so concerts and so uh, con oh, my spelling's bad. Okay, I'm watching all the spelling mistakes now. I didn't see when I went through three times. I went through. I didn't notice them. Okay. <laughs> so generally, you'll you know you'll be the audience. Uh, you know, so it'll be movies, TVs, theaters, concerts, music festivals, whatever it is, right? So it's something that you go out, and uh, and yeah. You go out and, uh, you know, you enjoy yourself, except for TV, you can actually do it at home as well. But again, the question is, am I using my time and finances wisely? Uh, you know, I know people who have bought very expensive uh, equipments to have home TV, home theaters, which is fine. You know, if you think it's good and you're bringing fa uh, family value, uh, movies and entertainments into it, that's okay. Uh, it's cheaper than probably going into a cinema. Uh, we pay, you know, save a lot of money. But again, it's about making sure that you're using your time and finances wisely. I know some people get hooked to, you know, especially on these TVs like Netflix, Stan, they got these series, you know, the season one, season two, season three, season four. And you're sitting there, to, you know, 12 hours a day or six hours a day watching season one, season two, season three. You know, you just suddenly you realize you have lost about six hours and then you kick yourself. And then next day you do the same thing. Oh, I must continue now, you know. So you've got to be very, I've done it. I'm, I'm one of the culprits. So, you know, I'm, I'm saying from experience, right? So we've got to be very, very careful uh, with our time. Time is something that's very, very precious. Because time is a limited commodity that we need to be very, very careful. Does it have the right moral, biblical values? Again, if you're going for movies or watching TV, you know, so media is one of the most dangerous places where children can be easily uh, you know, what brainwash by, you know, if you're not there controlling what they're watching, what they're seeing, especially nowadays with young children, everybody's equipping your smartphones or iPads or, you know, whatever pets they have. And they're all stuck in their bedrooms and they're doing things we know the parents have got no control over. Right. So we've got to be very, very careful what is being streamed, what they're watching. Uh, so again, it is a responsibility of the parents to make sure that this is done in the way that pleases God, that is, brings, brings value into their lives, right? Again, does it project the truth or lies as truth? Movies, especially, you know, Hollywood is very good at converting uh, li lies as truth to show lies as truth. So we gain, you know, things like, you know, if you're looking at any uh, uh, adult rated movies and all that, you know, they, you know they, the way they expose themselves and all that, you know, think, the people think, you know, you're watching it, you get insensitized, you think it's normal, right? So things of that nature, you've got to be very, very careful, especially when we have children at home. When we are adults, it's, you know, we know what is right and wrong. And if you still want to watch it, that's your choice, your free will that you're using. But children, you need to protect their minds from getting, uh, you know, uh, into the wrong uh, contents that, that, that suddenly they become, think it's normal. And that's where the danger starts, okay? So does it stimulate sinful thoughts? Again, again, as I say, same thing. 
So anything that creates the stimulus sinful thoughts, uh, it is not is a no no to to you know in any form of entertainment, especially for even for us, because we know it is you know our spirit man will automatically tell you, hey, this is not right for us to watch, right? But if you still want to watch, of course, God doesn't slap you down for it. You know, you're using now your free will to do it. But is it edifying your soul? Is it edifying your spirit? Right? I know a lot of people after watching it, then they go to bed before God says, Lord, forgive me for watching this movie. I'm so sorry. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right? So that's what it is. Right? So we've got to be, be careful because we are children of God, you know, of the most high God. And everything that he does, we, we do, we got to be righteous because, you know, he has made us righteous and he has given us uh, the truth and we need to be live by that. So these are the three areas, you know, sports, uh, games, entertainment, predominantly most of these leisure activities fall under them. Of course, you know, really, you have other moments like reading, quite, you know, you want to read books or read the Bible's quiet time. All these things are part of uh, what we call our leisure time. Okay, so does it, you know, denigrate our Lord? So simple as that. That's the last, first, most important question you got to ask in any of the sports that you do, activities, entertainment, right? So keeping leisure proper. What kind of leisure activity is acceptable? I'm just, you, you know, this is a self-examination question that I'm putting here, so for you to look at, and just, you can ask yourself, and you can just see, am I in this right place? For example, you know, ask yourself some of the self-evaluation questions. For example, why do I want to do it? You know, this, whether it's a sport or game or entertain, why do I want to do it, right? What's the purpose? What is it I'm getting out of it? Is it something that's going to edify or is it going to, you know, make me stumble? Things of that nature, right? What's the pur what purpose will it serve? Is it just self-satisfying, self-gratification? Or is it something that I'm going to use to help, you know, bless others to time where I can, you know, be a team player and encourage others? Uh, as part of a ministry, evangelism, right? Will it build me up or others in Christ? You know, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. So this is something that you can ask yourself. Will it be a help or hindrance to holy living? Okay, so I'm just putting some scripture verses. So everything we do, we must check against the word of God, right? Would it cause others to stumble? You know, what I'm doing, will it cause others to stumble? Uh, so we have a responsibility because we cannot be the cause of others to stumble, right? That is not right, right? So does it bring me into bondage or cause me to lose control? Especially if you're looking at, uh, you know, pornography or sex, something sexual in nature or something with extreme violence, you know, things, all these other things, we've got to be very, very careful because if you look in US, uh, the US, you know, because the gun is, anybody can buy guns. So you just don't feel well about it. Somebody, you know, talks and tells them something wrong, they go and shoot, right? Uh, kill people. So it is, it's, 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 that's the kind of situation. Why? Because they have, you know, got themselves into some, some belief, ag leisure activities or things they've done, which, you know, they feel either they, they think it's okay, to, you know, they've been desensitized, especially if, if, you know, especially children now, when they're watching these violent video games, you know, they're playing online video games. They're so violent, right? They think it's okay to hit somebody or to, you know, bully somebody or to, uh, you know, to, to attack somebody. It's normal for them, right? They're getting some special pleasure out of it now. It's the, they think it's going to give them fun, pleasure. Uh, so these are things we're going to be very, very careful, okay? Is it a morally positive, neutral, or negative? Again, these are some questions that you can ask yourself, right? Am I using it as a covering for my own sin? Am I just, uh, you know, make myself, you know, I can be, you know, out, outside the world, I might be fantastic, you know, beautiful man or, you know, look good inside when I, you know, behind closed doors, I could be doing something totally wrong, uh, things of that nature, right? Does it violate my conscience? Okay. So if it, obviously, if you know it violates your conscience, then you know the spirit of man is telling you something, the Holy Spirit is telling you, that this is not good for you, okay? It's not healthy for you, right? Would I do this if Jesus was with me? You can ask that. Remember that Jesus is always with you because he's in you, he's dwelling in you, right? Because he's abiding in you in him. So if you always ask yourself, will, I, will Jesus be pleased with what I'm doing? That's a good question to ask, right? That's a good uh, litmus test, okay? 
And finally, will it glorify God? Okay, whatever I do, will it glorify God? So these are some questions that you know that you can ask yourself uh, when you, in whatever that you're going into any sports or games or entertainment or whatever things or activities that you're doing. Uh, because we need to be make sure because when you do the right thing in your leisure, it actually edifies you, it enriches your soul, it en enriches your spirit. You really feel good. When you feel refreshed, you feel good then you know that is something that is more godly uh, and is not satisfying the lust of the flesh. Right? So keeping, you know, what is, how do we keep leisure balanced? So leisure is a God-given blessing, okay? The industrial, you know, today with all the advances of 20th and 21st centuries have made available, uh, you know, more leisure time we have than before. We have, we have got so much more leisure time now you know, even when you're driving to work, you can listen to music, you can, you know, watch, you know, you can do things that, that sort of is treated that moment of time, whether it's half an hour, 45 minutes, you can classify it as leisure or you can use it for something useful, right? And, uh, you know, when you're in between, uh, you, you know, in the office, sort of people, you know, they just sneak in, uh, they put the earplugs on and they're watching videos instead of working. Right, so all these things because of technology has made things uh, leisure more at the expense of work. People are doing less and less work and more and more in leisure. In fact, they're even uh, robbing the time uh, from the employers uh, that God, they're, they're being paid for because they're now creeping, leisure is creeping into them. So these are something that we got to be very, very careful. The question that we got to ask, we got to be balanced, right? Most people in the world today still work six days especially in the emerging countries, right? From sunrise, just, you know, to care of the daily needs. So we, we, need, we are blessed in our, you know, in countries like Australia, but we need to be also careful. We, say we need to balance our leisure with what we must do uh, for our workplace, or in, our, in our workplace or in our, with our families and so on. So that is very, very critical, right? Many think they deserve more hours of leisure per day to relax. Right, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's enough in the proverbs to say, you know, you know, if God even talks about the ants, they don't have leaders, right? Yet they, you know, constantly are feeding, taking, you know, working together food and so on. Uh, but there's a sluggards who actually, you know, their hands are, you know, they, they don't do anything, uh, even they, you know, even to at the destruction of their farms or whatever. So we've got to be careful, do whatever is pleasing to them. So God expects us to be good steward of what we have. What we, we should be thankful for the leisure time we have, whether it's a little or a lot, we have to use it wisely, right? And some countries, you know, I don't know whether it's a blessing or a curse, they've got too many holidays, right? So that, that, is, not, that is not very healthy either because sometimes people just don't know what to do with it, right? Uh, so that is something. So it's got to be bad. God, you know, we need to balance it. So, if, you know, rest is good and needed for the refreshment of the body and mind. Even Jesus, as I said, he needed rest, but we are not to be lazy, right? Rest is for a, for a moment in time, but not as when we please we need it. And especially in countries like Australia, you know, we have people in Europe as well, but because of the government, uh, so, you know, uh, black flag, they give... Uh, uh, and you know, unemployment benefits and so many other benefits, people exploit it. There are generations of families who are living out of entitlement, and that is not God's plan, right? That is wickedness. And those, you know, you don't get blessed because of that, because you are actually not working, you're not blessing God, only blesses the work of our hands. So you've got to be careful again that, right? Continuing with that. As I said, sports can be great and participation in them can be good exercise <coughs> that is often needed because we need exercise, but sport is not to be central in our lives. They should never become controlling of your leisure time to the detriment of your pursuit of holiness. Games can be a lot of fun and many are also educational. If we use them wisely, they can also be helpful in developing godly character, right? The Christians need to be careful to play games for the right reasons. Gambling is not wise stewardship. And we should not involve ourselves with games that are contrary to godliness. If you don't think Jesus would play ga that ga the game with you, then find something else to do. right? Because the devil is always there to play with you. 
he will want you. In entertainment, uh, can be a nice way to relax, but we must be careful of the message and the moral values that comes with it. So it is, whether it's good, neutral, or evil. So we need to always check. So I've, I've given you enough uh, questions to think about. What is it that, you know, good? What is it right for me, my family, uh, my children, and so on, right? So balance is not, if balance is not achieved by keeping a schedule of activities you do, but by making sure you put in so much time and eat each lot. So it is a, it's about... It's about keeping balance, right? It is not about making sure you put in so much time into each slot. It's not about filling up the gaps, but it is about balancing yourself to make sure what you're doing is right in line with all the other seven areas of your wheel of life. It's got to just fit in in the appropriate level. Balance is maintained by increasingly sensitive, by becoming increasingly sensitive to moving of the Holy Spirit so that you keep the priorities that God has set for your life as he desires. And God does want you regular activities, not only to include Bible study, prayer, and service, but also rest and recreation. Okay? So, so basically what we're saying is that if we're coming back to the triangle, how to be right in leisure, I will say, will I, what, will, what I do please God? Okay? Will what I do, whether in whatever is in sports, games, or entertainment, or whatever I do, will it please God? I'm looking up to God for help direction on that. Doing it together with my spouse, family, and colleagues is in. So whatever, I, rather than me being just by doing it myself, I can, you know, make it into a collective sports or where I can bring my family in or my colleagues, uh, you know, it's, it's more entertaining or exciting. Uh, so yes, you can do that. And using leisure as an evangelistic activities, how can I use that to reach out to people that outside there, you know, that, that who love certain sports or games or entertainment that I can go out with them at the same time, have them a time to, to align with them and redirect them to where God wants them to be. So these are some of the three areas that I would say uh, that the triangle is effective as well. Okay. And so finally, some questions for you, suggestions. Uh, just an example, is my leisure activity taking too much of my time? Uh, what do I do about it? How can I involve my spouse or family in it? Uh, I, I, some of the leaders, I like it. They talk about holidays together with families, you know, uh, and spouse. Uh, you know, is what I'm doing building others? Uh, that is something that is good. And I like what, like, uh, you know, beat better, Vita said, and also you know, somebody else also too. I, I think it was... Uh, uh, Dave, is what I'm doing something that can be turned into an income, right? So, so these are some examples that, that you can think about. Uh, to, so always don't make sports just for yourself. Don't be inward looking, always outward looking. So the only time I would say leisure is inward looking where you're spending that moment, quiet time with the Lord, meditating, reading the word. Other than that, always involve somebody else because then you bring joy to others as you have joy for yourself. Okay. So with that, I'll pass over to Ruben to, to talk about the... Add to what he's saying, just to give you some thoughts to think through as well. Um, and uh, keeping in mind, you know, this circle that uh, we showed you earlier, um, this is something we spoke about before we started this series on refuse, replace, persist, look for fruit. In other words, um, would you make a decision to refuse not to have leisure activities, you know, refuse to stop and actually start having something and start and look at how you're going to replace. So this is why we have um, these, these goals is to start finding a new habit and then persist through it. And I'm sure you'll find fruit. Like uh, all of us can say there's lots of fruit in what we're seeing by adding uh, this to our, to our wheel of life. Um, if you're struggling through any of this, have a chat to some of the leadership. We we work you through this circle that helps you to work on what's stopping you from doing it. Um, I know I had a wrong belief system on leisure for many years. Um, just a thought on how Jesus sees leisure. As I was sharing before, Song of Solomon, my beloved calls to me, arise, my darling, come away with me. My beautiful one. So question, when was the last time you spent time with Jesus through your leisure activities? You know, when I go four wheel driving or going to the camp, camping and, and you know, the other day we went to a place called Lawn 
Um, and it's just a beautiful combination of beachside plus um, rainforest. And just going into the rainforest mist around and, and just being able to say, Father, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Um, Holy Spirit, you know, I'm so, I'm so uh, appreciative of this time. Um, it was surreal. And so for you, you might find, uh, are you taking time out to do that? Because that's part of our leisure. Uh, apologies, this picture didn't come out as well as I expected. But, you know, Jesus then says, even in Mark 6, 30, 31, he says to his disciples, come away with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And he wasn't saying quiet place, meaning that um, it was actually saying away from the crowds, in other words, away from the activities. And so question is, when was the last time you spent leisure activities with those you are leading and are discipling? That's why Pops Matthew and I are trying relentlessly with our implementers to get some um, fishing activity going. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're just getting one resistance, but we're working on it. Um, but when was the last time, you know, I talked to Shazzy as our leadership and said, hey, let's go away sometime. When was the last time those you're discipling, you're just taking them away and saying, hey, let's not do spiritual stuff. Let's do spiritual stuff in the way of just getting away together, having fun together. And just asking yourself that question and creating activities around that. What is leisure and recreation? It's time when you are not working. It's free time for you to do something you enjoy. Although I must say for Pops Matthew and I, maybe for some of you, working is actually just as much a leisure activity now. When we watch how money makes money and has children and we don't do have to do much, it's passive. It's very, very exciting. What are some of the fun activities, the games, the entertainment, the food, the friends, things you can do to have leisure and recreation. I know when uh, we had Pop 70th celebration and Nathan cooked up a feast of this most amazing Persian food and rice and the next day on Sunday, Pops Matthew brought it over to our home church and oh my gosh, I mean, the smell of it, the taste of it, uh, it it's, so you can have leisure around food. You know, you can, uh, we, we fellowshiped around that time and it was beautiful. It was a wonderful time together. And, and having that, so there's so different ways. I'm sure um, people, some people find, I find it uh, really thrilling to cook some food with my kids sometimes, make some meals with them. So that brings me to the last point. When was the last time you spent time with family without rushing to the next meeting or activity? Loved hearing Pops Matthew saying how he you know, went away with his family, his adult children um and uh, and uh, including his uh, son in love and uh, was able to spend time and enjoy and you can bring jesus into all these activities they, they they bless him in in the fact that we take time out to do stuff so here's some just some thoughts for you whether it's the young kids bike riding games at home whether it's older kids camping or hanging out together whether it's a mom daughter thing, a father son thing, father daughter thing, a sibling thing, whatever it is, when was the last time you actually had some activities that were leisure based? So I'm just talking about around yourself with the Lord, around your family, around those you're leading, discipling, influencing. So I'm just going to give you some time to write some goals. And for those who came in late, these are some examples of the three things I want to see achieved. I wrote this in January during the conference uh, in my leisure activities and uh, how I've broken them up into three, six, nine, 12 month milestones. And as you can see, I've started ticking some of them off. And, and you don't have to have it by April if you're starting to write your goals today, to the way in April. So your three months will be May, June, July, and then and uh, six months will be October. Nine months will be January. And then 12 months will be April. Make sense? 